because obviously I represent a lot of companies. A lot of companies get charged with offenses where they want to advance a defense of due diligence. And so the first thing we do in a mechanical ish, in a mechanical charge is we start looking at all the maintenance records. These are four things that I routinely see missing from fantastic companies with really good um, uh, maintenance policies, but they've got records that don't stand up against scrutiny from a prosecutor on cross-examination. And so what I always say is make sure that your maintenance, your routine maintenance records include the following. You want a unit number, a plate number, or a VIN number. Quite frankly, have all three for all I care because the plate numbers can change. Vehicles, you know, you'll, that vehicle will endure, but the plate number will change. And now we have to do some explaining in court. Judges don't understand this. Um, and so that's why I recommend having, having the unit plate and VIN because we may need to tie the unit in to some other piece of evidence that didn't have the plate or VIN. And, and so that's why I recommend all three. The odometer reading, it, it, it's frustrating to try and explain to a, a judge who doesn't understand that, that vehicles, commercial vehicles, will do millions of miles, that one day it was, you know, a, it was one reading, and then a couple months later, it looks like the vehicle drove so many, you know, drove recklessly negligently for, for such a time span because they don't understand the concept of commercial, commercial travel. So I always say have, have Every single, if you can, have every single routine maintenance record reflect the odometer reading. And have the mechanic or the technician's full name or, or an ID number that will somehow we can link to a full name. I just had a trial last month where there were three bills that worked, at the main, that worked in, in the shop, three of them. And so I said, okay, I want to talk to this guy. I want the bill. And then they said, well, which bill? And I said, well, I don't, I don't know. It's your shop. So they said, well, I, so I'm asking each one of them, do you remember, I don't know, I don't know who said, I can't tell. So I had no evidence to call, and that was the problem, right? So, so I could not actually call the maker of that document to tell us about all the wonderful things he did to maintain the vehicle, because I didn't know who it was. And lastly, a uniform date system. Have a policy for this. It sounds so simple, but... So I'm just giving an example, day, month, year. Okay, that's your policy. Everything that's produced out of your maintenance department or quite frankly out of your office has that date system. How confusing it can be if we've got, you know, six, nine, six, nine, whatever. And, and then they go, well, is that September or is that June? Which day is it? I don't know. And you know what? It can mean the difference between proving a case and not proving a case because the minute that I introduce a maintenance policy and it says that we're going to inspect our vehicles every three months, and I go, okay, here's, here's the maintenance record, but I don't know what the date is. Guess what? I can't prove that we met our own policy, and that is the coup de grace. That's it. We're done. It's over. <laughs>